and welcome to this video. My name is Miriam and I love books. Um, in 2021 I challenged myself to read 365 books, so a book a day, and every week I post a weekly wrap-up video about the books I read in the past week. I do share a TBR of the books I read, but I always leave room for spontaneous reading, so that's why my TBR videos are not like the same as my weekly wrap up videos and lately I've been actually I've been picking a lot of spontaneous reads and um, I haven't finished my entire May TBR but uh, I'll try to do the best I can. If you've seen my previous weekly wrap up videos you know that I'm a bit behind on my challenge but it's getting better because I read eight books in the past week and as you know if you want to read 365 books in a year your average every week should be seven and this week it was eight so it was over average um i was actually planning on reading more than i already did but then on sunday evening my new nephew was born so well uh i was too excited to read a lot but still i read three books during that day so that's great um well um, let's just dive into the books I read in the past week. Um, I don't have a lot of time so I won't tell a lot about these books but I will tell you at least what I thought of them. For those of you who don't know, in my weekly wrap up videos I tell about the books I read from Saturday to Friday. So this week's weekly wrap up video is about the books I read from Saturday the 22nd of May until um, Friday the 28th of May. And the first book I finished was a novella. I read three novellas in the past week, so that's actually the reason I managed to read eight books, but that's okay because I don't have rules about novellas. Um, so the first book I read is called Later or Later. Um, it's a book by a Dutch author. In my previous weekly wrap-up video, I told you all about the Dutch book week thing and that you get a book for free and this was the book you got for free in 2016 I guess. Um, it was a very interesting read although like novellas do it left me with some questions I still wanted to know what happened to certain characters but it was a very interesting read. The next book I read was a Dutch non-fiction book it is called Grip and it's how you can uh, well it was about working smarter instead of harder and I really enjoyed the book. I read quite a number of books in that genre that deal with that topic but I think this was actually the best book I read about it. It was very realistic that um, it was very realistic and it definitely helped me with some issues I have with focusing on my work. So that was a good book to read. The next book was The Clear From Your Heart, the Dutch translation of No One Ever Asked by Katie Genscher. I don't know how to say her name. I'm sorry. I'm so bad at this. Actually, when I was reading it, I posted a picture on my Instagram and someone who has like almost the same reading taste as I have said she had not really enjoyed this book. So I was a bit scared, but luckily I did enjoy this book. I thought it was a... Um, I think it dealt with a topic that we should talk more about. The book actually deals with racism and the American school system and if you're a bit interested in those topics I would definitely recommend this book to you. Uh, the fourth book I finished the past week was uh, Morality for Beautiful Girls. Uh, this is the Dutch version obviously and uh, this is another book in the number one ladies detective agency in by Alexander McCall Smith and I'm reading like one book a week from this series and I did enjoy this one it was yeah I enjoy all of these books they're not really difficult but they're easy to read and it's just lovely the next book was also an easy read uh, called Alles op Alles a Dutch original by Marijke Vos um, I think you can translate its title as whatever it takes. It was a very interesting read about someone, about a Dutch girl who went to the UK and worked on a sort of um, 
what's it called? I can't remember. It's like a house, like a Downton Abbey type of house and stuff like that. It was such a great book. I really enjoyed it. I think that was one of the best books I read in the past week. After that I read another novella, uh, Waiting for Pizza by Elizabeth Musser. Um, this is a very interesting story. Usually in the Dutch Book Week, which I told you all about in a previous weekly wrap-up video, um, a book, the gift you get when you buy uh, a book, is uh, written by a Dutch author. But this one is not. It was written by an American author. But that's actually because quite a number of books that are written by Elizabeth Musser have been published in Dutch before they are published in English. And some books even aren't aren't even published in the USA. Like uh, The Wren's Nest. I told you about that in a previous video. And it's actually a pity because it was a really great book. But I think that's the reason they asked her to write the gift for the book week in... I think it was 2009 when this one was... Uh, the gift. And the next book I finished was actually the current gift you get when you buy books because last Wednesday I bought not one <laughs> but two books. Well, I said I was only allowed to buy one book but it turned out to be two books. Um, this one is called Gewijde Chaos or I think you can tr translate it as Sacred Chaos and it was written by Annemarie van Heiningen Steenbergen and she usually writes non-fiction and this is a fiction book. Um, I don't know if you know those books but Adrian Plus also writes sacred diaries because this was written in a diary style and it really reminded me of the sacred diary of Adrian Plus. And I know that this author is hugely inspired by Adrian Plus so I think it was based on those books and uh, I hope she's going to write a bit more fiction in the future because I thought it was really interesting, it was good to read and I absolutely loved it. The last book I read in the past week was Words Unspoken by Elizabeth Musser. That one took me actually quite a couple of days so I read some books in between. Um, I thought it was an interesting book but it had quite a lot of characters that were um, the story was about. And that was the reason why sometimes it took a while for me to get back into the story. And what also did not really help was that I only read for... I could read for like 20 or 30 minutes. And that was usually the amount of time it took me to get into the story. But then I was simply too tired to continue or I had to work or I had to do something else. So um, yeah, that was not really... Good. but luckily I had read a lot of books in the weekend even though my nephew was born so it did not really matter that I was well this this book took me a bit longer to read but hopefully in the next week I will um, I will be able to read a bit more and uh, get back on track um, I'm, I've almost finished my audiobook, so that one will definitely be in next week's weekly wrap-up video. And I'm also reading a non-fiction book that's... I will finish it before the end of May, that's like my goal. And hopefully uh, that means that I will be back on track if you see my next week's weekly wrap-up video. Uh, this Thursday there won't be a video, but there will be one next week. So, and also my weekly wrap-up video will be up next week. So if you don't want to miss those videos and you're not a subscriber yet of my channel, then consider subscribing. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And uh, let me know in a comment, uh, what was the most surprising book you've read lately? And as always, happy reading.